related, but just the fact that Nick Sirianni is willing to get out and coach this team and coach them hard, that uh, he will hold players responsible just for practice mistakes. So he sure, sure is that going to hold them. We are Bird 365. Today being your truly Jody McDonald with my partner in crime, Jeff Kerr, filling in for John McMullen. He is winging his way down to Eagles practice. He'll hear from Coach Sirianni coming up uh, shortly, and uh, you'll catch him here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel, I'm sure, later on today. Uh, JK, uh, I brought this up with John, and I just wanted to get your take on it as well. Um, Coach Sirianni, yes, it was pretty well noted gotten Jalen Rager's kitchen pretty damn good. Um, we know that Rager, people were uh, speculating a much improved year from him this year. Disappointing rookie season as a, a first round draft pick. Um, coming in, you know, you're now paired with Devonta Smith. So maybe you'll get a little less attention than you did in your first year. He certainly had room for improvement, started the year with an injury and then uh, never really kicked in for him. So the expectations were what they were with, when camp opened and they still are what they are. Um, but he's had a uh, tough camp too. Um, didn't pass his uh, qualifying test, physical test to uh, start practices. Um, they wrote it off as he was having uh, difficulties because he had a tragic loss in his personal life. Uh, a good friend of his uh, growing up uh, was killed, murdered. Um, and so Jayla wasn't 100% focused. And that's what they used as an explanation for him to not pass his uh, physical test to be able to practice. He has since done so and is now playing again, but uh, hasn't been a major shine guy in the preseason workout so far, and including getting uh, reamed pretty good by uh, Nick Sirianni. I I'm okay with this. I have uh, empathy for uh, Jalen Rager's situation, and I feel badly that, of course, uh, he lost his friend. Um, but we all have losses in life, and after a period of mourning, you got to be able to go on with your own life. And going on with Jalen's life is getting ready to play a football season for the Eagles here in the National Football League. Um, but the thing that I like about it is uh, not even, well, it's, of course, it has to be Jalen Rager related, but just the fact that Nick Sirianni is willing to get out and coach this team and coach them hard, that uh, he will hold players responsible just for practice mistakes. So he sure, sure is that going to hold them for responsible for mistakes made on game day. He's been an affable guy with the media uh, and has even put smiles on his face. I know there was the story circulating yesterday, which didn't come down till after we on we were on the air here with Bird 65. I guess it uh, uh, broke on, on WIP that he was down the shore and uh, there was a wedding going on in the hotel where he was staying and that someone recognized him. So they, hey, can we get a picture, coach? He ended up taking a whole bunch of pictures with the wedding party and said to Angelo on WIP, I guess I'm going to be in their wedding album. And uh, th th he handles that stuff pretty well. He's got some personality to him. But I like the fact that he can also be a tough guy coach if he deems it to be necessary. I think that's a really good sign. And if you're wondering where Nick Sirianni is going to go, I know. We haven't played our first exhibition game yet, but everybody wants to have an opinion on what kind of a hire the Eagles have made as a head coach. I'm feeling pretty good about Nick Sirianni right now. How about you? I like how hands-on he is. Like, And you're right, Jody. He's not afraid to grow. He, and I'll go one better with Jalen Rager. I actually think Jalen Rager likes to be criticized. He, he I, I, You know, his dad played in the NFL. His dad knows more than anything about what NFL life is like, and it's been a lot easier since Monte retired, but the point still stands. Like Nick Sirianni is a guy that look, he knows when to be your friend and he knows when to be your coach. And I think that's the healthy balance. He's not your friend all the time. And he wants you to be the best football player that you can. And I think that's what he sees out of Jalen Rager. You can tell coaches are hard on players. They see the, the immense amount of talent. And if the player can take it, they're going to do it. So Look, Nick Sirianni knows Jalen Rager needs to be a vital part of this offense this year. He just does. Where Devontae Smith is in there or not, because you're going to have to free up Devonta Smith at some point. 
And Jalen Rager has the most talent out of anybody left in that receiving core to be that guy. I'm not counting the tight ends here. But the point still stands. Nick Sirianni, overall, he's been really hands-on. Uh, McMullen said it. I've heard uh, BLG say it. Uh, Mike K. There, a lot of those guys have said how hands-on he is, how detailed he is, how focused he is on everybody. It's just nonstop throughout the whole 75, 80-minute practice session. It's actually pretty incredible how – and attention to detail he is and how he knows his stuff. And I think he's going to be even harder on wide receivers because he does have a wide receiver background and he was a wide receiver coach. So look, they're very detail oriented and that's not a bad thing. Now I like the way that he's gone about his business and <laughs> we all want to analyze that. Shoot. You're doing a two hour Philadelphia Eagle talk show a day. You're going to have to uh, break down things like how he's being perceived in the locker room and we're probably putting too much emphasis on it now, but that's what we have to go on. And I got to laugh at uh, myself here for, for getting as much into the nitty and gritty as we do. If the Eagles lose their opener, how he handled preseason practice, how he's got some personality to him, how he decided that Jalen Rager was a guy that he could call on the carpet and borderline make an example of it, none of it will matter. It'll go right out the window if they go down to Atlanta and lose by 21 points. If they go down to Atlanta and win by 10 points opening weekend, this guy is a genius. Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Laurie hit the ball out of the park. Sorry, Doug, but 4-11-1 and one was 4-11-1. and one. We're 1-0 and oh this year. It does amaze me that even though we can feel strong about uh, the points that we're making now and uh, taking a, a well in advance look at Nick Sirianni, it really does go all out the window as soon as the season starts. And then it comes down to, did we win or lose? If we won, the guy's great. If we lost, the guy stinks. Get him out of here. Get him out of town. That's the want of the Eagle fan, is it not? Yeah, and that's the thing I look at, too. It's more of, okay, like, remember when Dick Vermeil, his first year as the head coach of the Eagles, it was they lost every preseason game. Then they got dumped, absolutely dumped by the Cowboys. And, you know, the infamous – and, you know, I, I've heard people say this on the record, too. I know it was an invincible, but Toast did say something to Vermeil and say, hey, what are we doing here? We just got killed our first regular season game. Uh, you didn't win a preseason game at all. So, yeah, it, you know, it's pretty much, okay, yeah, Nick, you look like a genius in training camp and preseason with your hands-on stuff, but you're right, Dre. It, if they lose, it doesn't matter. Like, remember – Everybody thought Doug was like this laughing stock, his first training camp. And they're like, okay, this guy's out of his gourd. And then they, you know, they make the trade for Bradford and they start throwing, oh, Doug, Doug's the greatest coach of all time. <laughs> you know, this guy, you know, what a hire by Howie and what a hire by Jeffrey Laurie. And it's, you know, I hate, because I don't want to build this team off one game. I really don't want to build this team off six games. I hate the beginning of their schedule. I do. And we talked about this before Tampa Bay, Kansas City, Dallas, you know. I want to see the developments of this football team, and I'll judge Nick Sirianni as a coach, probably not even after year one, unless they go like 2-15 and 15 or something, which I don't see happening. I just think this team is too good in the trenches to even allow that to happen. But if this football team is better the second half of the year compared to the first half, that's how I'll judge Nick Sirianni, which, again, and that's why I think New York Giants fans up I-95 were so excited about Joe Judge. I didn't think the Giants were a good team at all last year. I just think they played in a bad division. But they went 5-3 and three in the second half of the year, and they ended up 6-10, and 10, and they were god-awful. Like, you know, I remember covering the league last year. Everybody's like, Joe Judge ain't got to last a year. Well, Joe Judge looks like he bought himself another year or two just based off his finish last year. So I think, it, it, again, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And, yeah, in a way, that Atlanta game is a must-win game because – this is a team I feel they can beat. And with early on in their schedule, San Fran's going to be tough. They really are. Dallas is going to be tough. If they can steal a win in Dallas, I'm going to feel really, really good about this football team, no matter what they do. Carolina, I think, is the game. They should be able to win. Um, unless maybe they trade for Deshaun Watson. Then things might change. But that's a game where I feel the Eagles can match up with them on paper. So, again, I I'm looking way too much into the early part of the schedule here. But I'm definitely going to judge Nick Sariani on the back half and how they go going forward. Didn't want to run this one by you. Um, I'm sure you saw the story uh, broke yesterday that the NFL PA is suggesting to the NFL that they think they should change their COVID-19 protocols. 
that as of right now, if you are a vaccinated player, you're only tested for COVID-19 once every two weeks. Once every 14 days, you have to take a test if you've got proven vaccination. If you're not, you have to test every day if you're unvaccinated. And the NFLPA is suggesting that the vaccinated players should, like the unvaccinated players, be tested every day, just out of an overabundance of caution. And because we are seeing these breakouts around the country with the Delta variant, um, that we're seeing a lot of people test positive, um, that the NFLPA is suggesting they do this basically for the health of their own players, but it could also prove uh, certainly helpful for the National Football League if they can keep that many more players from contracting it. Um, good thing, bad thing. Smart thing, the PA stepping up and going, no, no. And there are some players who absolutely like the fact that they're only tested once every two weeks because it's a pain in the butt to get a COVID test every single day. And if you took the vaccine, you're hoping there's a reason that you took it to less the amount of time that you needed to be tested. Um, good thing that the NFL PA is attempting to push through here. So I got a buddy who has to get COVID tested every day, and he's been vaccinated for months and months on end, and he still gets tested. It's just the way it is. But there's a couple guys that, that he works with that are unvaccinated. And these this is what they say. Well, why should I get vaccinated if I'm getting tested anyway? So that could be a problem if a normal person's thinking that. What are NFL players? There Look at the Minnesota Vikings. I think they're the lowest team in the league right now in terms of vaccination rate. I think it's 61%, something like that. It might go up. I don't know. But – I don't think it's a bad thing per se that you get tested every day. I, I really don't, even if you're vaccinated, because at the end of the day, these businesses care about winning football games. And if these guys are available to win football games, that's what they're going to bank up on. We don't want to see a Kendall Hinton um, situation in Denver again. We just don't. So I don't think that's an issue if they vaccinate, if they test them every day, but right now you got to convince the unvaccinated people to get vaccinated and, I, I just don't know if you're testing them every day, the vaccinated players, why would an unvaccinated player want to get tested? Uh, or this, get is, yeah. this is pure speculation on my part. Um, uh, so please take it in that way. I think the NFL on both sides, both from management and from the Players Association, I think they've reached the stage where changing someone's mind is now out the window that they've got whatever their percentage is of vaccinated players, those who haven't been vaccinated to this point, who have been in camp for a week, have been around their teammates who have been vaccinated, they've done the extra protocol stuff that they need to do at this time. The whole fear of, you know, you could lose a game check. That's 117th if uh, a game should be postponed, should be wiped off the schedule. I think they've gone through all those um, machinations to try and affect someone to change their mind about getting vaccinated. I think those who wanted to get vaccinated or willing to get vaccinated came around to getting vaccinated have gotten vaccinated. And those who haven't aren't going to. They've taken a hardline stance on this and they just don't agree with the uh, reasoning behind getting vaccinated and they're not going to change their mind. So I don't think they're doing that anymore. That was at one point part of everybody's uh, mantra in doing things. Uh, we need to get as many vaccinated as possible. I think they've reached the saturation point. I don't think they're going to get somebody's going to go, eh, all right, fine, I'll get vaccinated. No, if they've been holding out this time, they're still holding out going forward. No, I really think it's about just protecting their players, which I cannot blame the uh, union for doing. I think they're doing the right thing by their guys. Yeah, and here's the other thing I want to bring up, too. If you're a fringe roster player right now, or even if you're not a fringe roster player, say you're a guy that you're above the bubble, but you won't get vaccinated, what's going to happen when they actually cut you? Because And they won't, never, they won't ever say it, but – we're cutting you because you're a detriment to this football team because you will not get vaccinated. Or we found a guy that, and they'll say this guy outperformed you in camp in the preseason. That's what I'm going to be interested in in a couple of weeks from now when they do the first round of cuts and the second round of cuts, and then they finally get to 53. Because the Eagles have a guy like that right now. I don't know if he's vaccinated or not. I'm, I'm guessing he's not Alex Singleton, but again, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speculate here, but he was on the COVID list. And again, you can, you know, 
whether he's vaccinated or not is, you know, it is what it is. But there could be a potential situation where if he doesn't get it and he's not up to speed in camp and look, he had a great finish to the year last year. And I think he should be on this roster, but what happens if a couple guys outplay him? Is he worth keeping around? That's what I want to know. And, you know, I don't want to single Alex Singleton out because there's tons of guys in the league like that. But in all retrospect, this guy should make the Eagles roster easily. But right now he ain't up to speed. He hasn't even been in pads yet. I don't even think he's done much of an individual course on practice. I think he literally just got off the COVID list yesterday. Right. Uh, he's ramping up at best. He has not really been able to take part in any uh, physical activities. That's a real good – because he is one of those cutting-edge guys. Just off what he did last year, should he make the team? Well, yes, of course. Is he a foregone – is he Lane Johnson or Fletcher Cox? No, who they could test positive uh, for a month straight, and the team would still say, yeah, but he's Fletcher Cox. He's Lane Johnson. They're going to keep him. Singleton is one of those guys in the gray area that, yes, he's been good, but he hasn't been established for a long time. Uh, it's a very good point you make that he's one of those guys that kind of sits on the fences is on the bubble. Uh, and we'll, we'll still got several weeks of uh, preseason to get through and all three exhibition games yet to get played, even though I can pretty much guarantee you Singleton's not going to play against the Steelers next week. He will get a chance to uh, show in practice and that uh, middle game against the Patriots as to whether he will or won't be on his team or he will or won't be starting. For this team. He is Jeff Carr. I'm Jody McDonald. We are your Birds 365 guys. We still got, oh, well, a little bit more than a half an hour to go. Keep it right here.